Yeah, that, that's the thing that is bothering me about Parash Pose. They have three hydrating lotions. That's the name, hydrating lotion. And it's three completely different products. Like how, like how, how can you do that? So that tells me that if you cannot analyze the ingredients on the spot, like in the pharmacy store, if you're not fast enough with that, you're probably going to get the wrong product. There. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about La roche sunscreens. I'm going to talk about all the sunscreens that I have used so far. So the purpose of this video will be to inform you on La roche sunscreens, how I feel about them, are they good or not, what kind of UV filter system do they have, etc. And then I do want to go through every single one of these sunscreens and I want to comment on the sensor characteristics and how they felt when I was applying them to my skin just so you can better determine which one of these would be right for you and hopefully avoid wasting money and buying a sunscreen that is not going to be well suited for your skin type so there you go that's the whole purpose of today's video and before I start discussing each of these sunscreens separately I just want to say in general that I think that La Roche-Posay has very good quality sunscreens that they do have very good UV filters because La Roche-Posay is owned by L'Oreal so so they do have those L'Oreal group exclusive agents, Mixoral XL and Mixoral SX, and only L'Oreal owned companies have those. So most of the time they do have a superior UVA protection, which is really important because these days the problem in the industry is that we do not have a lot of UVA filters, but we do have a lot of UVB filters. So whenever I'm buying a sunscreen, UVB protection is really not a problem for me. I know that I will get a decent UVB protection with no matter what product I choose but the problem is always that UVA protection because we do not have as many UVA filters as we do UVB filters so that's the thing about La Roche-Posay I think that La Roche-Posay does have quite a few very good and photo stable UVA filters so most of the time these products will provide you a superior UVA protection which is amazing and they do, they do have products without fragrance that are formulated for sensitive skin which is great as well that is one thing that that I like as well but there is one thing that I don't like and that's probably the purpose of this video that's why I'm making this video and that is that they do have a lot of products similar packagings similar names so you can get easily confused with these and you can easily miss and get a wrong product for your skin type which has happened to me and that's why hopefully this video will help you with avoiding that mistake so I think that you really have to know how to analyze the ingredients to uh, figure out which product will be right for you because as I said they do have a lot of similar packagings similar names and yeah you can get easily confused and just get the wrong product so that's one thing that I don't like about um, La Roche-Posay but something's gotta give right uh, okay so there you go that's the point of this video hopefully it will be helpful for you guys and if you do find it helpful please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel because it does help me out a lot here on YouTube. So let's start with my all-time fave. Should I start with my all-time fave? Well, why not? Okay, I will start with my all-time fave and that is La Roche-Posay Antalya's Shaka Fluid. And I do have it right here with me. And by the way, most of the sunscreens that I'm going to discuss today, I don't have them here with me. I used them up a long time ago. But yeah, this is the one that I still do have because I, I'm consistently rebuying it and I um, constantly go back to it. So there's that, that's why I still have it. Here's what I have to say about this one. This one has a very high UVA protection. It has have PA quadruple plus, which means that, yeah, it has a high UVA protection. Also, it has a high UVB protection, SPF 50 plus. It's invisible, it's a fluid, and it does not have perfume, and it is formulated for sensitive skin. It's super lightweight. And by the way, I do have a review on this one. You can check out the review right here if you want a more detailed analysis of UVA. UV filters and you know sensor characteristics and everything and I will just give you a quick overview here so that this video doesn't last for two hours so anyways I use this one around my eyes it's super lightweight it, it doesn't feel heavy on the skin so this one is great also if you have oily skin it's going to be you know not that heavy on the skin so if you don't like that heavy feeling of the sunscreen on your skin this one is really good for that now the only thing that I don't like about this sunscreen is that 
that you know you get 50 milliliters here and you pay around 50 bucks for it which is for me not exactly cheap because you go through this really fast if you use it the way it should be used and that is two milligrams per square centimeter of your skin so point is you have to apply really a lot in order to maintain that clean protection that is written on the packaging so if you apply it that way you're going to use it up really quickly so this one does not last me very long if i'm using it on my face so that's the only problem that i have with it it's for me too expensive so that's why i use this one only as my eye cream i already started using retinol i'm using retinol around my eyes and on my face so my skin is going to be more sensitive to sunlight during this winter so i need something put around my eyes and on my face so this one i'm using around my eyes during the day to protect my under eye area from the sunlight so because i pay 20 bucks for this one but i use it all year around because it does have a period after opening 12 months so from the time that you first open it you have another 12 months another year to use it up completely so this one lasts me all year round if i use it as an eye cream i would recommend this one if you have sensitive of skin or if you're using retinoids and you do need a very high UVA protection, UVB protection, this one is great. The only thing that I wouldn't recommend is that you use it as a face sunscreen. I mean, you can if you don't mind the price and if you're going to buy a lot of it <laughs> to, you know, cover your face every day. Of course, go for it. If, if the price is not a problem for you, go for it. This is a great sunscreen. But if you want to stay on the budget, then you can maybe get this one and use it as an eye cream and use a different one on your face and that brings me to the next sunscreen that i want to talk about and that is the invisible antalias invisible spray now the reason why i'm talking about this one right after the shock of fluid is because they are very similar and i actually do have a video in which i compare them you can go check it out right here right here so I compared them in a video because I noticed how similar they are. They have a very similar texture. They are very liquidy, lightweight, easy to spread around, and both invisible, completely invisible, no white cast at all. The invisible spray is a little bit shinier on the face, but it's it's not really a, that big of a problem. You can easily set it. It's not that heavy, greasy finish. It just gives you a glow, but you don't have that heavy, greasy finish on your skin. And by the way, that invisible spray can be used on the face and on the body. I'm not sure if I mentioned this one can be used on the face and around the eye area. Now, invisible spray cannot be used around the eye area. It will probably sting because of some UV filters are kind of irritating to the eye area. So this one is supposed to be used on the body and on the face. So when I discovered this, I was so happy because last year, for example, I bought the invisible spray. I used it throughout the whole winter and I was using retinol so I needed to have a lot of sunscreen to wear during the day to protect my skin from the sunlight so that invisible spray was amazing I really I really loved it it did have fragrance that's one thing that is you know different of course the UV filters are not completely the same but that one also had PA quadruple plus and SPF 50 so it, it did also have a uh, superior UVA protection and UVB protection the, the UV filters are not completely the same but you can check that out in the video that I already made comparing these two so the only the only problem was that it did have a little bit of the fragrance but the fragrance was listed last and it also had a claim that it's suitable for sensitive skin so I was like okay let me give it a try no I can see that it has fragrance but let me give it a go even though I was using retinol when I was using that sunscreen it did not burn my skin I did not have any irritation from it so, so the point is, it is lightly fragranced and the chances are that if you're not too sensitive to fragrance products, you are going to be able to get away with using this one like I was. Because when I use retinoids, I do react to fragrance products and I did not react to this one. So there's that. I think that if you don't have highly sensitive skin, you will be able to use this one. So there you go. That one is my favorite fave if you take a look at the description box in every video i do have a recommendation of my fave sunscreens and those are these two the shock of fluid and invisible spray by la roche posay those are definitely my faves 
so far. Okay, moving on. The next two sunscreens by La Roche-Posay that I want to talk about today are the Age Correct sunscreens. These are new. These were released this year and I did make two separated reviews on those two. You can check them out right here. If you want more detail, go check out those uh, videos. If not, then stay here and I will just give you a quick overview of those two sunscreens. So there are two versions. There's the tinted version and the non-tinted version. So I first got the tinted version. I'm not sure why. I just thought, wow, it would be so cool if I could wear a tinted sunscreen instead of foundation. It sounded too good to be true and it ended up being, yeah, too good to be true. Um, so yeah, the problem that I had with it, the sensor characteristics were terrible. It was uh, very hard to spread, very hard to blend, very hard for it, for the pigment to stick to your face. So I looked patchy and it took me 20 minutes to blend it. So that was a big no for me. It just, it just didn't work. So that, that was the problem. But overall, here are the claims for that sunscreen. Both of them have the same claims. They can reduce dark spots, they can reduce wrinkles, and they offer you a high protection. And both of them have SPF 50 and they do not have a separated UVA rating. So you don't have a PA quadruple plus, it's just broad spectrum. So that means that the UVA protection is one third of the claimed UVB protection. Calculate one third of SPF 50 and that's how high the UVA protection is. So you do not have a separated UVA rating. It's the UVA protection is not as high as for example, the Shaka fluid or invisible spray, but they do have high protection. Broad spectrum is still good. It's not a bad uh, sunscreen. So don't worry about that. So that was all good. Besides that, they also had active ingredients, phenyl ethyl resorcinol. They had hyaluronic acid and they had niacinamide, which is great. You know, imagine sunscreen with niacinamide and, you know, hyaluronic acid, phenyl ethyl resorcinol. It's nice. You know, phenyl ethyl resorcinol can reduce dark spots, niacinamide as well. Hyaluronic acid can plump up the fine lines and hydrate. So it was amazing. The only problem that I had with the tinted version was that it was, it was just not blending and I just gave it to my mom and I never returned to it. But then again, the non-tinted version was actually very good and I really enjoyed it. It was very easily spreadable. It gave me a nice little glow. It was really good. And the only thing, the only problem that I had with it, that one was that it was peeling just a little bit, which to me wasn't really a problem. But in the comment section on that video, I did get a lot of uh, people that were complaining that it was peeling and that that was bothering them. So just, yeah, keep that in mind before purchasing. One more thing worth mentioning here is that those two sunscreens do not have alcohol. So in case you're against alcohol, keep that in mind because all the other sunscreens by La roche do have alcohol and the Shaka Fluid has alcohol and Invisible Spray has alcohol. These two do not have alcohol, but they do have fragrance. They do have a little bit of fragrance. So yeah, keep that in mind as well. For me, it wasn't a problem, but yeah, keep that in mind as well. Okay, so who would I recommend these sunscreens to? Well, first of all, the tinted one, I wouldn't recommend. I mean, I just couldn't handle it. So that one I'm not recommending, but the non-tinted version was really good and it did give me a really lovely glow and it did show mild results. I also have the results video. You can check it out right here. You can check out the results there. It did show a slight difference in the after photos. So it might even reduce a little bit of dark spots if you use it a longer period of time. Uh, you know, you it might help you with reducing dark spots. Okay, now the last two La Roche-Posay sunscreens that I have for you are the Echo Conscious Tube Hydrating Lotion and this one also hydrating lotion, but this one is not an Echo Conscious Tube. I'm assuming that your thoughts are, oh wait, but are, are they the same? Is, is just the packaging different? Well, that's what I thought. I thought that this was the same as the hydrating lotion that I was using in the summer because it had the same name. Hydrating lotion. But apparently it isn't, it isn't the same. And I figured that out once I came home and I analyzed the ingredients. I did not find the Echo Conscious Tube in the pharmacy store where I was buying this one. So I could not compare them on the spot. So I was like, okay, they're probably the same. It's the same name, you know, SPF 30 hydrating lotion. Like how many hydrating lotions can they have, right? But apparently they have at least three. Yeah, that, that's the thing that is bothering me about La Roche-Posay. They have three hydrating lotions. That's the name, hydrating lotion. And it's three completely different products. 
Like how, like how, how can you do that? So that tells me that if you cannot analyze the ingredients on the spot, like in the pharmacy store, if you're not fast enough with that, you're probably going to get the wrong product. There, there. I'm really, I have to, you know, I have to admit, I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed because this is not the product that I wanted to buy. So I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of a little bit annoyed, but yeah, never mind. Okay, here's the thing. Let me just explain the difference. So, so let me first talk about that hydrating lotion in the Echo Conscious Tube that I used in the summer. Now, I do have a video in which I was kind of reviewing it. It's this one, this one right here. Half of that video is me getting ready for the beach, and the other half of the video is me reviewing the Echo Conscious Tube hydrating lotion. And you do have the timestamps, so you can just watch that part where I was talking about the hydrating lotion. So that one had SPF 50 high UVB protection and it also had PA quadruple plus that means very high UVA protection it was fragrance free so it was suitable for sensitive skin and it was meant for face and body so you could use it both on the face and on the body now I did use it on the face and on the body during the summer on the body it was leaving a very velvety finish it wasn't greasy on the face it was a little bit too much but that's because because it was summer and in the summer like every sunscreen everything that you apply on your skin is too much because of how much you're sweating you know so I think that I would be able to use it during the winter without any problem to be honest but I just couldn't get it right now I wanted to get it for the winter but I couldn't so that one was really good and it had a very high UVA protection which is what I wanted which is what I needed but I didn't get it and one more thing the white cast it wasn't leaving a white cast but you have to blend it really well to avoid the white cast so the white cast wasn't the problem don't get me wrong but just at first when you start spreading it my face did look a little bit whitish but then as I was blending it properly the white cast disappeared so you have to blend it a little bit more to avoid the white cast that's all but other than that the sunscreen was good and one more problem that i had with it was the packaging i mean echo conscious tube it was very hard to get the product out and another thing that i noticed when i was analyzing ingredients now it did have isopropyl palmitate kind of uh, high in the ingredients list and that ingredient is comedogenic but it did not cause me any breakouts i guess when you remove it properly in the evening if you're not acne prone or prone to clogged pores you won't have a problem but if you are then you know be, be warned so there's that that was the echo conscious tube i really enjoyed it it was really good and i think that i would be able to use it during the winter but i couldn't get it so yeah there's that and now let me give you the tea on this hydrating lotion so this one has the same packaging it's it's just this one is plastic this one is not echo conscious this one is plastic it's also a 250 milliliters it's also called hydrating lotion it also has spf 30 but it does not have a separated uva rating it's just broad spectrum and when i analyze the ingredients yes i noticed that the filters are not as good as in the echo conscious tube hydrating lotion so yeah i have to say that so this one is also non-perfumed uh, suitable for sensitive skin and it has spf 30 and it's a broad spectrum so you do get uva protection but it's not as high as in the echo conscious tube hydrating lotion and one more thing that is a difference in comparison to the echo conscious tube is that this one is meant only for the body it does not have a claim that it is safe to be used on the face so when i saw that that really intrigued me i was like why why should this one not be used on the face like what can be the problem here so i did analyze the ingredients and i did notice that it does have a couple of comedogenic ingredients not highly comedogenic but it does have a couple of comedogenic ingredients i can list them right here for you guys now that might be why they're not claiming that this one can be used on the face as well but i used it on the face it's not stinging it's not burning it's not doing anything this is just the you know it's just marketing of course you can use it on the face it's meant for sensitive skin there's 
no reason why you wouldn't be able to use it on the face. Now, as I mentioned, it does have a couple of comedogenic ingredients and they are listed pretty low. So that means that, you know, it's probably not going to cause a problem for you unless you are acne prone or prone to clogged pores, then avoid this one. If not, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to use this one on the face as well. And I did buy this one, just used it on my face throughout the winter. So yeah, I'm definitely going to continue using it on my face because now that I paid 20 bucks for it, there is no going back. <laughs> um, no, I'm not going to buy another one just because, you know, I made a mistake. I'm going to use this one up throughout the winter. So uh, the thing that I wanted to say, it's safe for sensitive skin. It's fragrance free, but no, it does not have as high UVA protection as the Echo Conscious 2, but what can we do? If you can get the Echo Conscious Tube one, get that one. That one definitely has better UV filters than this one. That's the one that I was going for. I did not know that I have three products with the same name. Also, I am wearing it today and it did perform really well as a makeup base, I would say. So there's that. It's not completely bad. Yeah, like you can get this one as well, but I'm just recommending that if you can get the Echo Conscious Tube, go get that one instead of this one, just saying. But if, if not, if there's nothing else in the store, like it was the case for me, like in this pharmacy store, this one was the only one available. That's why I got it. So it's not that bad, you know, and it's also the same thing with the white cast. You have to blend it properly to avoid the white cast but overall I'm, I think I'm going to do a review on this one as well a separated review once it's done it's going to be here and uh, yeah so there you have it if you can choose between this one and the echo conscious tube go for the echo conscious tube so there you have it that would be it for today's video hopefully this video will help you in choosing the right sunscreen for you and your skin type if yes please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel channel and leave a comment down below which one of these sunscreens do you think will be good for you and your skin type I'm interested in knowing that and yeah thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video bye